Good morning. I am Sharon Santana. Today I am here to present our work on building extremely fast and efficient NFVs with Unicra. Before we start on this topic, let me introduce myself. I work as a software specialist at NEC Laboratories Europe, and I am part of a team of eight researchers who are working as a part of the systems group in our lab. One of the projects within our group is Unicraft, and this work contributes towards the port of TPDK on top of Unicraft as such. So for today's talk, we have structured it in such a way that we begin to discuss what is existing out there. Then we move on to introduce Unicraft, the motivation behind Unicraft, and uh, how everything is structured within Unicraft. Then we talk about how to integrate DPDK libraries on top of Unicraft. Then we speak about the functionalities which Unicraft should provide to support these DPDK libraries. And we make a performance evaluation between a Linux VM as well as a Unicraft image. And we discuss about the synergies of the two projects, Unicraft and DPDK, and uh, how it fits into this ecosystem. So when we began, uh, what we had in our mind is something like the diagram in the slide, where we have a guest operating system, and we have KVM as a hypervisor, and the host and the guest interact with one another through a para-virtualized framework like Virtual. And then this, and then this, and then this uh, framework was further uh, optimized with something called vhostnet to to further uh, improve the performance of this communication channel and DPDK came along with his own vhost user which further enhances this communication in our bottlenecks. But one part of this picture which has been left untouched is the guest operating system as such. We believe we can do better with the guest operating system. We believe we can specialize the guest operating system wherein, wherein we take in only the required components needed by the appli application into the guest operating system Thereby, we optimize it for something like a boot time or image size or even memory, memory requirements for an application. And if we are only running specific application within the guest operating system, we could also reconsider in the necessity for having kernel and user space separation within the guest operating system. Thus, if you're focused on a particular use case in mind, then uh, Unikernel seems to be a good fit for that specific uh, image as such. So if we were to make a comparison between a virtual machine image and that of a unikernel image, it's, it looks like something like, something like this. Uh, and in a virtual machine image, you have a number of applications and we have a large number of library pool and we have a single monolithic kernel. From an application, an application needs only some subset of these libraries from the library pool and some specific kernel components. Contrast this with that of a unikernel image. A unikernel image is built with one purpose in mind. Thereby, you only need an image which has the specific libraries and the specific kernel components with the application message. Just to summarize a unikernel image, what a unikernel image is a purpose-built image with a thin layer of the kernel embedded into the application message. Thereby, the application as such has to, has to select which are all the libraries it needs and which are all the kernel components it needs. Since the kernel is embedded into the application image as such, the necessity for kernel and user space separation is no longer needed and whatever was a syscall in a virtual machine image now becomes a function call within the unikernel image as such. And since we are picking and choosing components needed by the application, we can specialize the entire software stack right from the kernel to the libraries to the application message. Where do we realize the potential of a unikernel? We can realize it in terms of faster boot times because it needs only a few milliseconds to boot a unikernel, whereas it takes a few seconds for a virtual machine image. Just lower memory footprints. For example, a unikernel needs only a few megabytes in size, whereas a typical virtual machine needs few few hundred megabytes or a few kilo, few gigabytes in size of memory. And also it has a higher deployment density. So it's easier to pack a lot of unikernels and its performance is comparable to that of a regular uh, virtual machine image. And also since we are only baking what is necessary for an application into the final image, 
it has a reduced attack surface because it contains what an application needs. And also since the since it has only those necessary components, it, it is as a smaller trusted computing base as such. So a unikernel looks quite promising, right? It has good performance, it has quite a nice isolation features, instantiation time, and image size. But why? The question is why has it been, why hasn't it been adopted more often? There are a number of reasons for it. Uh, building a unikernel is quite tedious. It sinks a lot of development cycles to get it right. And since you are doing it for each of the specific application, you keep repeating the same process again and again, and it becomes a bit tedious as such. And the other part is specialization is quite hard to build as such. Because uh, when you're specializing, you need a way to establish dependencies between the different components in the library pool and the different components in the kernel. And the kernel uh, and, these, and these components need to have a well-defined interface as such. So bringing up this interface definition is also quite a difficult task as such. Also, since you want to run off-the-shelf application on top of these libraries, you need to make sure that you stick to a standard interface so these off-the-shelf applications can run on your on your library pool and and on your kernel components as such. So with this, we decided to come up with a tool where it makes it easier to build unikernels as such. So with that in mind, we had these common objectives in mind. We wanted to make sure most of these components were reusable, so we don't have to throw away any effort taken to build a specific application as such. So we wanted to build as much minimal basic blocks needed to build up. We, we, we came up with a lot of basic blocks so that we can support a wide range of use cases as such. And also we needed to make sure that we have necessary tools to make sure we can uh, establish these links between the different libraries and, and the components. And also we needed to make sure that uh, the generic components or generic uh, components are separated from specific uh, platform specific or architecture specific components so that uh, you can use those generic components across the different platforms as such. And we wanted to support a wide number of hypervisors as well as architect as well as architecture setups. So with this in mind, we came up with a tool called Unicraft where everything is a micro library or library in essence. And the two prominent components in the entire ecosystem are the library pools and the build tools. With the library pool, what, what, you, can, what you can do is you can enable or disable a specific library pool and the build system provides you the necessary, necessary convenience to do that. And also you can establish a dependency between one library to another or one library and a kernel component. And this library pool also includes the OS components which are decomposed as such. So how does it affect? So, and also uh, Unicraft is open source, which is BSD licensed. So how does it take to, what does it take to build an application with Unicraft, right? Let's take an example and run, let's run through it. So if we take an application like a uh, typical DPDK application in L2 forward, we needed to select which are all the libraries which it needs to which which it needs to select those libraries. These libraries also include something specific like kernel components. Also, for example, a NetDev provides you a net device interface. So you need that in order to support an L2 forward application as such. And then uh, Unicraft provides a different set of uh, platform architectures which it runs on. So those specific libraries which are specific to a specific platforms need to be selected as such. And also the architecture specific code. And once these are selected, the Unigraph build system as such bakes your final image together and you have your final executable image to run on a specific platform. So when we started uh, our work on uh, DPDK, this was the mental image we had to port a DPDK image to Unicraft as such where we have a DPDK application and we have something like a libuk DPDK, which provides the Unicraft functionality to a, to a DPDK application and it interacts with the internal Unicraft libraries as such. But 
we also had uh, some design considerations into uh, account when we came up when we had this mental image also one of the advantages of the dpdk library is its modularity and the advant and also the benefit of unicraft is its modularity so we wanted to retain as much modularity as possible so to do that we needed to make sure that the build system of unicraft can understand the build system of uh, dpdk thereby it can use its modular modular libraries as such and we wanted to find out where are all the possible cases where we can optimize the guest operating system where we can simplify a lot of simplify a lot of uh, operations for a dpdk application essentially and also we, the final constraint which is for porting any libraries we wanted to minimize as many minimize the changes within the upstream code within dpdk so to make sure these build system compatibilities are match we first compare and contrast the two build systems as such unicraft build system is kconfig based whereas uh, dpdk build system has some auto, auto config generation happening and also a unicraft build system has some specific library name variable naming convention whereas a D, a dpdk also has a similar uh, naming convention which needs to be translated from one to another and and also it had something called export sims in uh, dp in uh, unicraft which tries to hide uh, unnecessary functionalities from a library to a to other libraries as such similarly uh, dpdk had a version map equivalent so in order to address these differences we came up with a solution using a typical unicraft approach which is to build a library around it so we came up with this library called dpdk build library what it does is it processes uh, the make files of dpdk and translate it to the make files understandable to unicraft as such the advantage of doing it is we can add a dpdk library as such to unicraft and unicraft can then translate all its all its necessary dependencies to a unicraft build system understandable make file as such thereby what advantage we gained is we were forward compatible right so as long as there was no change, build system change in dpdk as such we can adapt all its libraries necessary to unicraft without without any uh, further changes anywhere else and also this library contained if you have any specific configurations within uh, dpdk this library contained those configurations also so with that in mind we came up with this sort of an architecture diagram uh, or a building block diagram where we retain as much as uh, the as much as the uh, dpdk libraries are concerned for example this rte eth dev or m m um, the memory pool the m pools or m buffs were were not changed one bit in within unicraft whereas for each for the abstraction layer we needed to add some specific unicraft specific code which we'll talk about later and apart from that there are two libraries which are of consequence here which are the uk ring and the uk pmd libraries we will talk about these libraries further down the talk yes. so then uh the next part of it, of our uh, discussion was how to specialize the guest operating system as such we we looked at three uh three parts where we could uh, optimize on where we could optimize the unicraft guest operating system as such one is the memory management system the second is a device management system and third is the scheduling part in terms of memory management system what unicraft provide was a, a static memory image where we where we have huge pages of 2 2 gigabytes mapped into the first 1 gigabyte of the address space as such so thereby we only support 1 gigabyte of memory and and thereby we have a one to one translation between a pa and va within a physical address to a virtual address within that of a unique kernel as such and from an application perspective an application can specify or reserve a memory range from the unicraft unikernel thereby you can make sure that this is specific to you can reserve this memory region and you can take this memory region and use it for your memory buffers as already and also it is possible to implement 
multiple allocators to understand which allocator is best suited for your uh, for your specific application message. In terms of uh, the device management itself, uh, what Unicraft provides you is Unicraft just probes the devices and lets the application take over the device control app altogether. So Unicraft identifies which are all the devices necessary for an application and just hands it over to the application and the application, it's up to the application how to handle these devices as such. You don't need any, any additional file system or anything else to handle these devices as such. And finally, for scheduling as such, uh, Unicraft gives you the ability uh, to make sure that uh, you can run an application, an application can hawk the CPU cycle until it can yield to another uh, to another thread. So Unicraft uses a cooperative scheduler, thereby it runs a an application can run a task without minimal interference from the uh, unikernel as such. And also, if 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 it is possible, if if necessary, we can also completely do away with the scheduler and run uh, run the entire application within a poll polling mode where everything is event driven, where everything is event driven or interrupt or an interrupt driven thing. So next, what is needed from Unicraft to support a DPDK library such? So we compare and contrast how a uh, typical uh, data flow works with between a Unicraft library and a DPDK library. So on the left, you have the DPDK workflow and on the right, you have the Unicraft workflow where you have an application wanting to send calls the RTETH dev burst in uh, DPDK and UK net dev burst. And, and then it calls the Vertio drivers to send out the data out. So you need, um, and also here, uh, DPDK libraries handle mbuffs, whereas uh, Unicraft libraries handle netbuffs as such. So there is a difference in data structure between the two libraries. So we need a way to, to mangle and to mangle from one uh, data structure to another. Also. A similar diagram for the Rx part of it. I'll skip this part. Right? So what is, what is the difference between a net buff and the end buff message? So with a net buff, what you have is, uh, you had a, you had a pa packet data with, with a net buff, you had this net buff structure, and then you have the user private data within the, which is the net, which is the applications usage of the net buff. And then you had the packet headers and the packet data. Whereas if you take the equivalent of an, uh, M buff, you had this mbuff buffer, then you had the packet data and you had some private data for it. So we needed a way to mangle from one net buff to an mbuff as such. So we came up with this UK ring library, which does this mangling from one, uh, one data structure to another. And also the poll mode driver translates the call, anything which is happening within the uh, uh, DPDK context, to that of the Unicraft context within the net dev. So thereby we were able to translate from a net buff to a M buff and M buff to a net buff with, with just these manipulations, whereby we point the private data of a, of a M buff to the net buff and the private data of a net buff to an M buff, thereby it's easier to translate from one another. And finally, we talk about uh, the performance evaluations. Here, we used uh, two, set, two, two systems. One was the packet generator bar receiver, and the other, other system is the one which runs a Linux VM or a Unicraft VM message. The one, uh, it is a, it is a Sandy, Sandy Bridge server uh, with uh, six cores on it. And uh, we, had, we were using DPDK 1908, Kimu version 4, and uh, the Linux kernel, the host kernel, and the guest kernel were uh, 4.19 DPDK. And uh, in terms of the next graph, where we show is the baseline performance. What we do here is we vary the package sizes from 64 bytes until 1500 bytes, and we measure how much throughput we get in terms of 
billions of packets per second. So what we gain is we, in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, we, we measured it in four mechanisms. One is using the vhost user and which is the DPDK accelerated version and the vhost, which is the kernel accelerated version. And in terms of Unicraft versus DPDK comparison, we are quite similar in uh, transmission performance as such. Similar performance we did for the RX throughput, where uh, the RX part of Unicraft with a vhost user is slightly slower than, is about 11 million, 11.5 million packets, whereas the uh, RX of uh, RX of uh, Linux VM was around 13 million packets uh, for the minimal packet size and for the rest of them was quite matching. So we, there are some bottlenecks within the RX which we need to figure out, uh, which is part of the future work as such. So in the previous two experiments, what we did was a packet generator keeps sending packets and we drop the packet once we receive it or once we send it. Here, we did another experiment, which is like a key value store. What we did was uh, a, a packet generator sends you a stream of packets. We receive the packet. We read some specific, based on the values in the packet, we read a key value store and we send out the packet out. So with that, a single core is, is, being, is, now, being, uh, is now processing the receive of packet, processing some data within the packet and sending it out. And we made a comparison of that with the Linux VM and that of a Unicraft and with the DPDK and Unicraft with NetDev running. And all of them were quite similar in terms of 6 million packets per second. And in terms of resource usage itself, uh, what we observed was in terms of memory usage, Unicraft needed to run, to run the DPDK application, Unicraft just needed just one gigabyte of memory, whereas uh, Linux VM needed a six gigabyte of memory. So it's about six orders save, savings. The boot times of Unicraft is about 87 milliseconds, whereas the boot time of a uh, Linux VM is uh, unoptimized, is about 12 seconds as such. And the image size comparison is, the Unicraft image is about 1.4 megabytes in size, whereas a uh, Linux VM is about 2.5 gigabytes in size. So it's about a huge order of magnitude difference between, in terms of resource usage. Finally, uh, the next part of our, uh, of this journey is we needed to add support for SMP drivers, SMP support so that we have multiple CPUs. And also we wanted to try out running DPDK drivers instead of Unicraft drivers, which were run so that we can keep it up to date. So if you if you find this work interesting, you could you could also for further references you could I have put on some of the links you can refer it. And thus to conclude my talk uh, of Unicraft, we made a, a comparison. Unicraft provides you multiple platform support, a specialized guest operate guest OS, whereby we optimize for image size, memory consumption, and uh, also the boot times at the same performance. And we have a simpler manage, device management, uh, simpler device management for a DPDK application. And we provide increased control for an application compared to that of a Linux guest VM. And in terms of DPDK, DPDK provides you the benefit of a highly optimized network stack, a specialized VNF functionality, and a lot of untapped potential from the DPDK drivers as such. So I think, the two projects go hand in hand in the VNF domain. And it is a benefit that we use uh, Unicraft as a DPDK image in, a, in, a, in the virtualized uh, network function. If there are further questions, I would like to leave the floor for further questions. If, if you have any questions, please ask. Thank you.